Hey everybody, Billy from Billy's Bike Adventures. Thanks for tuning in today and watching the video. Now, as you can see, I'm out on the big BMW R1200 GSA Rally. And uh, it's my bike that I currently have at the moment. And I'm gonna do, be doing a review on this today. And I'm gonna be telling you what my top three pros and cons are of this bike, how it compares to the last bike I had, namely the KTM 1290 Super Adventure R. And I'll be telling you which bike I prefer. So if that's of some interest to you, keep watching and let's get into it. Now, if this is your first time at Billy's Bike Adventures, thank you very much indeed for watching the video and coming to the channel. Don't forget to click subscribe, the bell notification, and then all to make sure you don't miss out on any updates. So I'm going to talk about my top three pros and cons. Let's get into the cons straight away and start with those. So my first con is the size of the bike. I mean, look at the size of this bike. It is an absolute behemoth of a machine. Looking down on this super wide tank, not helped by the fact that the engine sticks out like it does and when you look at the front the front profile of the bike as well it's also quite a wide and bulky bike for that reason um, I I don't feel confident or I wouldn't feel confident taking this bike off-road I haven't decided to take this bike off-road yet and that's purely based on the size of the thing I for, for me it's the it just looks a little bit too top heavy now i know people will say that you know it's a, a low center of a gravity because of the way the engine sticks out and the weight of the engine but just just looking down on this bike is, is a huge piece of kit and uh, it just gives me cause for concern that i wouldn't want to take this bike off road compare that to the ktm a little bit slimmer the ktm still quite a heavy bike almost as heavy as uh, the bmw uh, but I, I feel more confident about taking that bike off-road. Uh, I may have to do a skills course with BMW Motorrad just to make sure that I increase my skill level with this bike. Because right now, given the option, I would not take this off-road. And the size of the vehicle has something to do with that. So that's my con number one, the size of the bike. Con number two for me. We've spoken a little bit about it already in the first con, but it's the engine. And I'm not talking about the performance of the engine, I'm talking about the size of the engine. I mean, just the way that it sticks out. Um, I've almost dropped this bike a couple of times when I first had it because I wasn't used to the fact that there was a, a big engine block that stuck out either side of the bike. And when I've gone to put my feet down for an assured footing to keep the stay upright, I've actually walloped the engine with my with my legs and my feet and that's because I'm quite a, a leggy person I'm six foot two I'm quite tall and um, uh, my natural instinct is to put my foot down forward as, as I go down as well and I, because of that I've, I've kicked the engine a few times and I've almost come off the bike now that would be even worse for me being off-road because um, it would kind of inhibit your assured footing immediately um, and uh, given that I've done it a couple of times just on normal tarmac uh, I worry about how that might perform um, on, a, on, on a gravel track or, or anything like that so not a massive thing but it's enough of a thing for me to be concerned about it uh, so the second thing the second con for me is the engine the way that it sticks out um, doesn't give me confidence about an assured footing when I'm coming to a standstill or I want to quickly put my feet down. So yes, there's videos, I know there's loads of videos on YouTube of guys taking these bikes off-road and they're quite capable, more to do with the capability of the rider rather than the bike, I think. Uh, so for me, that's a bit of a concern. So that's my con, my second con for this bike is how the engine sticks out uh, and inhibits my, um, my assured footing. Now, con number three for me on the BMW R1200 GSA. It's the front wheel. It's too small. Uh, the KTM that I've had previously uh, uh, had a 21-inch front wheel. Uh, this bike doesn't have that. It's a smaller wheel on the on the front of this bike. And for that reason, um, I wouldn't feel confident taking this bike off-road and, and being confident that I'm going to get over or through over any kind of... Uh, large stones, boulders, except not boulders, but large bricks and, and cobbled stones and stuff like that um, compared to the KTM. Certainly on loose gravel or sand, you certainly want a bigger wheel for that and uh, this bike doesn't have it. So that compared with a, a number of other things about this bike that I've already talked about just doesn't fill me with confidence about taking this bike off-road. On-road, absolutely sublime and I'll talk about the on-road stuff in a minute when we get into my three pros. Uh, but a con is the smaller front wheel um, again is 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 a 
is one thing that um, forces me to think about not taking this bike off-road. And so for that reason, the small wheel at the front of this bike, that's a con. So that's my three cons for this bike. So I've talked about the three cons for the BMW. Let's now talk about the three pros for the BMW R1200 GSA Rally. The first one I've got to go to is comfort. This bike has absolutely premium comfort level on this bike. BMW done a great job uh, in terms of the standard seat that comes with this bike. It's like riding on a springy mattress, absolutely sublime. Uh, the comfort level is, uh, is surpassed anything that I've experienced before. I had a Ducati uh, Multistrada 1200 Enduro previously, the most uncomfortable bike that I've ever sat on. That's not me bag bagging the Ducati brand or the performance of the bike, just the comfort level of the bike. It was appalling. Even uh, with the comfort seat that I purchased for the Ducati, um, made no difference whatsoever to the level of comfort on that bike and for that reason I didn't keep it very long. But the comfort, and how does this compare to the KTM? Well, the KTM I could quite happily ride on for a good number of days without feeling any discomfort at all. Pretty good for a, um, a, long, a long trip mileage bike. Uh, but the, the BMW, it just has a, has a premium quality about it over the KTM. Um, and for that reason, the BMW does win on the comfort level for me. It's absolutely sublime. Like I say, it's like sitting on a springy mattress. And I know that when I do my trip to Croatia later this year in June, and I'm going to go on this bike that I'm going to have 10 days of absolute sublime comfort uh, sitting on this bike and I'm not going to have any comfort issues whatsoever during the 10 day period and so for me I'm really looking forward to that and this bike absolutely wins out over the uh, over the key, over the larger KTM the 1290 Super Adventure R just a sublime level of comfort premium quality you might expect that with the, given the price of the bike as well uh, but BMW done a really good job on providing good quality comfort on this bike very happy to spend 10 days in the saddle okay pro number two for the BMW the engine so we talked about a little bit about the cons of this engine for me but I have to say it's also a pro as well the way that this bike delivers its power through the throttle the level of sustained cons or consistent delivery of the power through the throttle how smooth it is all the way through uh, I've never experienced anything like it BMW have done a great job at getting this bike to deliver the power consistent smoothly all the way through the throttle beautifully done that added to the level of comfort to this bike makes this bike an absolute premium quality bike and ideal for any rider that's thinking about doing long journeys multiple days thousands of miles not going off road and just enjoying the scenery and taking in the pleasure of riding a quality bike the engine is absolutely superb it's it's one of the best engines i've ever experienced now having said that i do miss the the badass the brutality of the 160 horsepower ktm 1290 super adventure r engine there is just something about it that i just love it's it's throttle control is is a little twitchy on the power you might expect that given that it's 160 brake horsepower but there's a little bit of badass nature about it there's a little bit of a badass a badass uh, culture with that with that particular engine and that and that the power of that bike and i do like that compared to the bmw the bmw is more sublime more premium the ktm a bit more badass a bit rough around the edges and i do like that um, i do find with the ktm and the power that it gives you do end up being a little bit more aware of the of the power that it gives and you, it's, it's not that I don't have respect for the power of this bike but you've just got to have that little bit of more concentration and a bit more edge of respect for the KTM in terms of the power and the way that it delivers this this bike the BMW sublime and a premium quality in its delivery of the power from the engine so for me the con sorry the pro number two is the engine absolutely beautiful despite the fact that it sticks out and it inhibits my assured footing it's a beautiful engine and uh, nicely delivered in its power. Now, pro number three for me on the BMW. It's got to be the TFT screen. Not the TFT screen in isolation, but the TFT screen combined with the Motorrad app that you can download on your smartphone for this bike. Here's the reasons why. Um, how it compares to the KTM. Let's, let's talk about the TFT screen in isolation first of all. And both of do as good a job as each other. 
provide all the information that you need and it does it whether it's dull overcast or shiny bright like it is now very clear on the screens um, KTM does just as good a job at that in fact I probably like the shape and style of the KTM TFT screen a little bit better than I do the BMW uh, there's not much in it uh, but styling wise I, I just prefer the KTM right small thing not enough to make me decide that I'm gonna buy one bike over the other however when you combine the TFT screen with the app BMW has this hands down the winner um, there's a card just up top uh, that on a, the KTM my ride app um, that I did a while ago when I had my uh, 1290 Super Adventure R and uh, KTM, uh, KTM have had a few issues uh, with the software relating to the, the KTM My Ride app. When I had my bike, uh, the phone kept on disconnecting uh, every time I started the bike up again, uh, or not disconnecting, but it wouldn't reconnect. So I had to set the phone back up again every time to connect with the TFT screen on the bike. Um, having talked to uh, KTM about it, not really interested, didn't give me any real uh, uh, support or anything like that and I've had viewers that have uh, looked at that video about the KTM MyRide uh, app video that I've done um, and have fed exactly the same uh, information back in no support, no no uh, solutions in place to, to fix it just a software issue that KTM are probably aware of but they're not doing anything to expedite the um, a solution for that and it's frustrated many of my viewers um, it certainly frustrated me when I had the 1290 compare that to BMW my phone connects every single time set it up the first time never had to do it again since the ride by ride navigation or the turn by turn sorry the turn by turn navigation that gets displayed on the TFT screen is excellent no better than the KTM but at least I don't have to set my phone up every single time I, have to, I start my bike. Uh, and so for that reason, oh, and one last thing. The KTM MyRide navigation app, five pounds. Five pounds to download an app to work with your bike and your smartphone that doesn't bloody work. How cheeky is that? Unbelievable. BMW app, the, the Motorab connected app, free, free of charge, okay? And it works, and it works lovely. It works with the software on the bike, no issues with it at all whatsoever. KTM, you've got a lot to learn about service delivery, not just about the bikes, but your uh, your accessories, your app, and the way the smartphones work with your bikes. Um, quite appalling compared to BMW, and for that reason, BMW offer such a, a better service when it comes to integration of software with their bikes. Um, I've got a... Uh, a cradle here there's a video up top about that cradle I can put my, my smartphone in there and I can use my BMW connected uh, maps and it'll it'll do everything that I need it to do I haven't bought the the Motorrad uh, GPS I think it's a bit pricey and I'm quite happy to use my phone in this cradle um, and, the, and it does such a such a good job uh, KTM uh, you're letting yourselves down by not only charging five pounds you should have actually sent a barrel over for me to bend over whilst I uh, press pay on that app for you um, and, for, uh, and then for it not to work a hundred percent of the time uh, and for your attitude in um, not providing expedited solutions to fix it um, well certainly not to my knowledge anyway um, very very poor service great bikes but you let yourself down with your your accessories for the bike in the in terms of the software upgrades and things like that very poor so BMW again such a great uh, such a great um, app that works with the TFT screen so for me that is pro number three versus the KTM the TFT screen on the BMW with the BMW Motorrad connected app so there you go that's my top three pros and cons of the BMW R1200 GSA and how they compare to the KTM 1290 Super Adventure R I did say at the start of the video I was going to tell you which bike I think I'm going to end up with long term so based on everything that I've said today, uh, the pros and the cons, the biggest thing for me is being able to take my bikes off-road. I do not have the confidence in wanting to take this bike off-road at the moment. And for me, 
for that reason, that's why I would end up back on the KTM 1290 Super Adventure R. It's not that I don't like this bike, I really, really like this bike. It's just I don't have the confidence in wanting to take it, to take it off-road. And for that reason, I, I'll probably end up with a KTM. As I say, I may have to do a course with BMW Motorrad just to increase my skill level of riding on this bike, especially off-road as well. Um, so stay tuned, I might actually do that uh, sometime this year just to be able to pick up my skill level. But for now, though, I'll be keeping this bike in preparation for my cr trip to Croatia. Stay tuned for more information about that. That's going to be taking place in June. But that's a 10-day trip. Really looking forward to riding this bike for the whole of that period and enjoying a, a, a superior premium level of comfort and quality riding. So, uh, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Give me a thumbs up and share the video with other like-minded riders and uh, don't forget to leave a comment. For now though, thank you for watching. Stay safe out there and I'll see you again very soon. Come on, you muppet. <laughs> what a beautiful blue sky sunny day.